You know, Stephanie, we've talked a lot. Um, we talked uh, uh, after your book came out about you reflecting on your role in the Trump administration. You've said things like you're not sure that you'll ever be redeemed for your participation in the Trump uh, administration. And you, you know, I, it, you really have soul searched uh, in, in the wake uh, of leaving. I do wonder what you think is next and if there's anything that you can shed light on about of what comes ahead. So uh, absolutely. And I'm still not looking for redemption. I'm actually just looking forward. You know, I've been watching this past year as the president continues to manipulate people and divide our country because he has a fragile ego. And that's all there is to it. You know, I can say that next week, a group of former Trump staff um, are gonna come together, administration officials are gonna come together and we're gonna talk about how we can formally do some things to try and stop him and also, you know, the extremism, that, that kind of violence and rhetoric that has been talked about and continues to divide our country. I myself um, am hoping to travel the country and talk to people who are believers like I once was and I want people to understand who he is he cares about no one but himself I think a really good example of that is you know the people who have been rightfully punished for their role in the insurrection you know where is he all I know is he's sitting at Mar-a-Lago apparently getting his legal bills paid by the RNC when you know this man is a master manipulator he gets people to do his bidding I was one of them and I want people to who who believe in him now to talk to me and I want to explain who he really is. So I'm really hoping for a good fight in 2022. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and do what I can. And I'm really excited to get with these former Trump officials and, and do some great things. Which, which former Trump officials? I'm not going to get ahead of that. We will be announcing that in the coming weeks, but um, it should be very significant. We're really, really excited. Can you, you tell me how, how many? I mean, how many of you are going to get together? Um, about 15 right now. <coughs> and is this people who are working inside the White House itself? Uh, some of them, yes. Senior to you, junior to you, both? <laughs> um, well, I was, uh, I mean, depends on what level. I mean, I was chief of staff, so <clears throat> right there would be <laughs> junior to me, but both. Um, that is interesting. Yeah. How, how did this come together? How did this group uh, of former, as you say, administration officials who are now going to meet to figure out a way to prevent Trump from retaking office, mm -hmm. how did this meeting come to pass? I think that there were a few of us uh, who, again, have been sitting back watching him continue to manipulate and spread this big lie and continue to harm our country and uh, started some informal chats and then you started throwing around ideas of what we could do, how we could formalize it, um, started outreach to some other people and then, you know, it's going to culminate into this meeting next week and we'll go from there. So what, I mean, what have you been, have you been Zooming? What have you been conference calling? What has this been like? Yes, there's been some Zooms, there's been some conference calls, um, and then uh, next week we'll be in person and Zoom actually, so, because some, some people are not local. If I can ask you to do something here, write the Trump press release, since you wrote a lot of them, <laughs> reacting to this meeting that you'll be having next week. Oh, uh, this group of losers and rhinos and haters are just coming together because they were so terrible at their jobs. Uh, my supporters will stand strong and, you know, we won't pay any attention to them. It's going to be something like that. But, you know, the more statements he puts out with silly names just means he's more and more concerned. So I actually look forward to that statement. So, Stephanie, the chair of the January 6th committee said he would like to hear from Vice President Pence. We should be clear, this wasn't a formal overture, but they would like the former vice president to participate voluntarily. Do you expect that to happen? I hope it will happen. Um, I think that he has a lot of insight. I'm not going to lie. I know that, that he's put in a, a very difficult position um, politically in order to do that, but I, I hope he will. I think that uh, the vice president's a good man, and I, I hope he will is all I can say there. Um, you heard Merrick Garland, the attorney general, yesterday promise that he'll follow this investigation wherever it takes him. You know that there are Democrats who are frustrated that the Justice Department hasn't at least publicly been investigating or targeting more senior people. Do you feel as if that's a missed opportunity? 
Well, I don't know that they're not doing that. I mean, to, to build a criminal case, you have to really be careful and find the facts and put them together. I understand everybody's impatient. I mean, I am too, but I believe that they're doing things behind the scenes that we don't know about, and I believe in the process. I really do. I think they're just taking their time to make sure they're building cases that could actually go to court and that they could actually win in. He, he said that they're going to, he basically said they're going to pursue whatever it is. It doesn't have to just be uh, the pawns in all of this. It could be the orchestrators or the masterminds of it. My words, not his. But he right. said within the law, right, within the law. And therein could be the difficulty. Because as Absolutely. you said, they have to be building a case. What does it mean if in the end there's a decision made that within the law they can't do that? that they actually cannot get to the heart of the folks who were really the ones behind this? I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, because Donald Trump uh, and a lot of his circle are amazing at getting other people to do things other people to do the things and then those people get in trouble. I mean, Michael Cohen is good as an example right there. They're, they're very, very good at that manipulation, which again is something I want to spend the next year really pushing and, and showing examples of. You know, I think that regardless of if they can bring charges against the former president, I think that the select committee is going to show you know, irrefutable proof that he was behind this. He, it was these people believing in everything he said. So perhaps there won't be criminal charges, but I think morally, I think this country is going to see, uh, you know, what went wrong. And then we just all have to come together and never, ever, ever let it happen again. Look, one of the crucial questions in the investigation is what happened during those 187 minutes before Donald Trump decided to ask the people behind us who were behind us here to leave the Capitol. Do you know specifically who pleaded with Trump to stop the violence during the attack? We've heard Ivanka, Kevin McCarthy, who else? I don't know specifically. Um, I know that Mrs. Trump did not, so there's that. Um, you know, all I know about that day was that he was in the dining room gleefully watching on his TV, as he often did, uh, look at all of the people fighting for me, hitting rewind, watching it again. Uh, that's what I know. And then finally, just before we let you go, Stephanie, you're going to have this meeting next week, as you said, with about 15 former Trump officials as you're trying to combat some of the rhetoric from President Trump. What is that offensive, that information offensive going to look like? Are you talking about going on television? You said you want to go around the country and talk to people, I guess maybe a listening tour. What is that going to entail? Well, that's part of what we're going to talk about next week. You know, what are the most effective tactics uh, to in order to carry that message. And I think everybody will have different roles that they will be more effective at. So that's that's part of next week is getting that planned. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I just think that it will be important for people in this country who are still supporting him to hear from people who actually worked with him day in, day out, uh, worked with a lot of people in his inner circle. Uh, we're not gonna just talk about you know, the former president, we're going to talk about the people who are surrounding him still now um, and who they really are. And I just, I'm hoping that people will talk to somebody like me or some of these other people who really did believe um, in Trump and understand that you can still be proud of his policies. You can still be behind a lot of the America First policies that he implemented, which I am, but it doesn't have to be him. It just doesn't have to be this man who has caused such chaos and destruction in the country.